Uh, so today we have Rosie Spicer with us again. We did have uh, her in a couple of weeks ago, but unfortunately there was some technical difficulties. So we're trying again because it was an amazing conversation. Thank you for coming back in, Rosie. Thank you for inviting me. So Rosie is a very special triathlete uh, in the local community. Um, she's currently a world record holder. Uh, we'll go into more details with that and I'll, I'll let her explain that because I don't want to do all the talking. Um, so Rosie, t take us through what kind of triathlons that you do. Well, I um, started off with obviously little small ones and then um, graduated to the half Ironman. Yep. And I qualified to be able to um, enter the Ironman Australia and I went into that and since then I've done 25 Ironmans um, around the world yep. and probably about 30 odd half Ironman as well. Yep. The half Ironman's a bit like a training day. Yep. And then, um, so and that now, wasn't enough? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I never thought that I would ever do an Ultraman to me. It just seemed just too much. Yep. Too much training, too, too far, too hard. Um, I've been crewing for Trout for eight of his races, and it's a three day event, and it's tough. Um, so I thought, yeah, that's not possible for me to be able to do it. Somewhere along the line, I got talked into it, I guess, and um, I decided, all right, I'll, I'll try. Can I try? Yep. So that the event is starts with a 10 kilometer swim. So my training started off with just training for Ironman, which is a 4K swim, and gradually building over the couple of months till I was quite comfortable with 8Ks and yep. then into 10Ks. Um, the people at the Albury Pool used to think we were crazy because we were there all day swimming, <laughs> four hours of swimming. Any anyway, rate, so then um, obviously the, you get out of the water after you've swam and then you ride for 140 odd kilometres and that's day one. Yep. You've got 12 hours to finish it, uh, that's the cut off time and then the next day is a 280 kilometre bike ride. Yep. Again you have 12 hours to finish it and then the uh, third day is just a bit of 84k run and again 12 hours 12 hours it. right so um this year at uh, noosa so fortunate the weather was absolutely fantastic and we were lucky enough to be able to go up in between covid yep. um it was opened and then it was closed not long after we came in uh, and i had a crew of four yep um, trout my partner my next door neighbor craig and Two other ladies oh, and a friend from Adelaide as well who came over with his family and um, so I had a paddler so you swim the 10 kilometers and uh, the paddler carries everything she was a lovely lady um, and she knew where she was going she kept me straight as well that helps <laughs> yeah it does rather because you sort of swim across the beach and back and then out along the coast and then back and again up the beach and back so that's the one 10 kilometers which took me four hours. Yep. So my paddler um, stopped me every half hour to enable me to have some drink, some salt tablets, a gel. Mm -hmm. And because the salt water kind of bothers me, um, makes my mouth numb, I took Listerine. Yep. Uh, the funny thing was that I thought I had a drink and I guzzled the Listerine. <laughs> it's not pleasant. No, no. <laughs> But anyway, it does work. It sort of cleans your mouth out. Yeah, there's a pro tip right there. Yes, that right. might be the key to a world record, actually. <laughs> um, it certainly wakes you up. And so once you get out of the water, um, your crew follow you. The girls obviously do into the change room. They take the wetsuit off for you and um, you get dressed in your bike gear. Trout and the other guys um, were just setting up my bike, make sure the drinks were on there, set my Garmin, and um, off I go. And the idea of the crew, they all jump in the car, and in the car is everything set up, like all the drinks are set up, and their skis, and the gels, and whatever. And they leapfrog me, so that I'm never out of sight, yep. uh, in case I get a flat tire, or something hits me, or whatever. So um, that was um, the 140 odd Ks, I think I averaged, it was actually 150, I averaged 30 Ks an hour. Yep. Um, so that and there's some wicked hills mm, over there. Five, yeah, five hours on the bike yeah. around this is yeah, tough in its first place. Towards yeah. the hinterland, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I managed to do that whole day in ten hours, 
yep. which was really good for us. I'm still new. Oh no, no, I'm now, sorry. Anyway, um, I get a little bit confused with all the figures. Yep. Somewhat going on. The next day you start at um, 5.30 in the morning. Um, you're, you've got uh, like cold, wet gear on in case it's you know, chilly. And they, your crew can't um, have anything to do with you for the first 60 kilometres. Yep. So you're out on your own. Uh, we had a police escort that took us out and everyone just files off, the better ones ride off. And yep. You're not allowed to draft, so you have to sort of keep away from other people. And then there's a certain area where your crew will pick you up. That's not my stomach. No, sorry, we've got <laughs> some construction behind us. <laughs> anyway, so, and again, yeah, they, um, they just leapfrog me. And um, the, there's one story which I'm so proud of. Uh, when um, I had run out of a drink, I would pick up the empty bottle and sort of kind of wave it to them, letting yep. them know that I needed a refill. And um, I, I was sort of going down this hill quite fast and I, they'd stopped and I didn't expect my drink there and then. I yep. expected perhaps the next stop. And Trout jumped out of the um, passenger seat, swung open the back door, reached in, grabbed um, a cold bottle hurled it across the car to Craig, who happened to be standing at the front of the car. He just grabbed it, held out his arm, and I went past and grabbed it. And it was like, yes, how good's that? That is awesome. <laughs> it was rather precision. Because um, there were times when they were trying to hold me something and, you know, like you're going yeah, too far. Yeah, fumble it, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, lo- uh, that some of my um, nutrition were donuts. Yep. There's a place up there that made them best donuts and so we cut them in little pieces because you can only take a mouthful at a time but that kind of changes all the the mouth you know like all yeah. the gel drinks and whatever just breaks it up makes yeah. it a little bit we use um uh, stuff called um newton i think yep can't remember its name anyway whatever it's really really good and it goes through your body really fast so it doesn't sort of bloat you like yep. a lot of the sports drinks can sort of you end up because you're drinking so much that you end up sort of like, mm, I can't have any more. But this stuff tends to sort of just um, go straight through your stomach, straight into the bloodstream, and gives you tons of energy without right. any of that sort of you know, nasty bloating feeling. And then, of course, gels. Uh, they make gels as well, but occasionally you might have a chocolate one or something just for a bit of a change. Yep. And again, that was a really tough ride. The, the last part of this ride, the 280 kilometres, about 40 of it is dealing with traffic. Yep. Most of it's all out in hinterland and it's quite steep hills and rolling and whatever, but you come along the coast and it's called the Dave Flow Way and you go through Cruelman and Origin Beach and then to Noosa and um, there's a lot of traffic. It was Mother's Day, it was warm, a lot of people at the beach yep. and so you've got to be aware of traffic lights, pedestrians, crossings, roundabouts, you know, like double yeah. traffic all the way. So it's You've been riding for you know nine hours and um, a little weary, and one one guy oh so mad this this car you just pulled straight in front of me to park it's in a parking spot and I no no consideration for me at all. Mm. Luckily I you know slammed on the brakes the back wheel went up and I thought oh no this is it you know twenty k's from the finish I was so cross yep and so I stopped the bike and I banged his car. And this woman went down the window and said, don't hit the car, you stupid bitch. And I went, excuse me? He's like, yeah. you just nearly killed me? Yeah. I felt sorry. Anyway, I got going. <sighs> yeah, I know. It was like, the old heart was yeah. going there. But anyway, um, so I finished that in um, around 11 hours. Yep. Which, which I thought was pretty good. No, sorry, 10 hours. Yep. Again, I've got this wrong. Um, anyway, then the next day you start uh, really early and you, can, you have to run the first um, 10 k's by yourself. You yep. can't have um, anyone near you. And that's just so that there's not all the crew cars around and you know, it's early in the morning and yep. you could be noisy for people living in the area. Um, and so Trout ran with me. He's what they call the pacer yep. and he carries the drinks and, and gels and stuff. So, and he made sure that, you know, I kept drinking, even if you didn't feel like it, you know, yeah. he just made sure that keep sipping, keep this, keep that, salt tablets, this, that. So you constantly, you know, someone said to me, what do you think about in all that time? But there's no thinking, right? It's just constant. Yeah. I've got to do this. I'm going to do that. 
And my coach is great. He um, suggests, well, he said that I should run 13 and a half minutes and then walk a minute and a half. Yep. And so I used to walk forward to that one and a half minutes. That 90 minutes. seconds, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. It goes so quick. Um, but, yeah, anyway, that, that kind of broke it up to four lots per hour. Yep. And it just made made it something a little bit better to focus on rather than just a slog, you know, just keep yeah. going. And you, you do tend to, once you've rested a wee bit, you you tend to sort of take off with a bit more vigor again. Um, it was a beautiful day, luckily, there, it wasn't hot. I yep. don't think it was hot. Um, and I managed to pass an awful lot of people going into town, because I'm a bit like the old, um, you know, the turtle and the hare, yep. the tortoise and the hare. Yep. Yeah, I'm the tortoise, you know. Just, That's all right. I just keep moving. <laughs> And a lot of people tend to sort of like rush out there and burn themselves out way too quickly. Yep. So uh, then I came in at, uh, I think it was 10 hours and 50 something minutes, but probably two kilometers before I finished, Trap, who'd been running with me, um, said, uh, I wasn't going to tell you this, Rose, but uh, you're going to break the world record. I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, seriously. And he said, no, you are. So come on. So I guess that kind of made me step it yeah, up a little bit. Yeah, wanted to finish with a bit of panache. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, like the, the last 500 metres, they make you run on the beach. Yeah. And oh, I know. That's I, cruel after 83 and a half kilometres to sitting on the beach. Yeah. And then, you know, you're trying to sort of find the hardest part of the sand to sort of run <laughs> along. And, and you see all these people having a holiday there and they're all sunbaking or whatever. And they're just watching these people go past. And, <laughs> you know, here's me slogging along the beach. But... You do tend to, um, you know, brighten up when you see that finish line. and Absolutely. And then got over the line. And um, I, I was so chuffed because th there's a surf club there with all these people that um, sit up there and drink and they kind of watch what's going on. And yep. Plus people around the beach. And the announcer had said that not only was I the oldest woman to have raced in Australia, uh, I also came fourth female in my age group. Yep. Oh, not in my age group. Um, overall. overall. Yep. Um, first in my age group because I was the only yep. one in it. <laughs> and, um, and then he said that I'd broken the world record um, by two hours and 25 minutes. And yeah. Like, yeah. Smash, I was, I was smashed stunned. it out of the park, I, <laughs> I think is. I was stunned. Uh, I was stunned. Seriously. Yeah. You know, I thought, okay, if I did it, maybe it'd be a few minutes or so, but yeah, not that much. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely sent it out of there. Yeah. Great. Like the, the last two Ironman I did at Port Macquarie, um, my, I beat the other competitors in my age group. Um, I think the closest one was two and a half hours away from me. Yep. But, yeah, last year was three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it just so, seems so odd. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, I think you've got to have some talent to be a world record holder. So. Thank you. So. I never um, thought I, I was, so I just, I just get out there and enjoy it and yeah i am competitive i guess but yeah but you now i understand you weren't always swimming cycling and running no i i always played a bit of sport but half time i'd always go and have a cigarette yeah like i used to think if sport interfered with my smoking i'd give up sport yeah uh this sounds terrible isn't it um and then um both my parents died very young mum was my age now yep uh, she'd been a heavy smoker and then my father who had given it up he died at the age of 70 with leukemia and my granddaughters twin granddaughters were just born and I could see if I kept smoking that's what's going to happen to me and I'd never see them grow up yeah so I thought I'll give up but then I was worried about that you know putting on weight and getting unhealthy and everything yeah um, and so I started to run around the outside of our home, yep. out on our property, seven laps was a kilometre, and the first one kilometre I ever did, I fell on the ground. I, thought, I can't do this, and I kept going. I persevered, and no one was watching me, so that was alright. <laughs> and then um, I tried, sort of suggested I try a little trap on Yak and Banda, yep. and um, got the bike and jumped on it, and thought, how does anybody ride one of these? And she was like, Have you seen those seats? They're tiny and they're that thin, and so uncomfortable and I made the mistake of wearing clip-ons and when I stopped I forgot about them yeah, and <laughs> just straight over took the tumble up. you're not alone in, uh, in know, that I world think, I don't I think, think, I, think everyone, I think everyone's fallen over I think you have to do it to know yeah but you don't do it um but yeah I couldn't even run I was so exhausted so I told Trout to finish the run for me 
which was only a couple of kilometres, and I got in the car and fell asleep. I thought, no, this, that's just way too hard. Yep. And I look back then and I think now, wow, you know, like how did I get from there to there? But it's it was four years of training before I, I did an Ironman, and it's been 17, 18 years that I've been have, you know, trying, and I finally did an Ultraman. So yep. it's not like... Um, it's not no, an overnight thing. No, no, and it's not like I'll just put in a year of work and see what happens. But yeah. this, this is a lifestyle. We get up, you know, when we're training, three o'clock in the morning. It's not really nice at the moment. So no, it's pretty foul at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and but you do it. Like I have to work. I've got to be at work by half past eight, so um, I have to do my training, and I have to have enough time to shower and get changed yep. and have breakfast, of course. And the great thing is that I work. Uh, in aged care, yep. so I'm an activities person, so I wear myself out before I go to work, yep. so I can sort of go slow with the residents. <laughs> they're, they're some of them are my best friends, yep. 90 plus. That's they're great. so supportive. Oh, they're fantastic. When I got back from the race, they'd made up a great big card and they'd put my photos on it. My whole office was covered in gold balloons. And oh, that's amazing. They found this gold bunny and put, you know, Rosie, well done. And, that's great. Yeah. And even the day before the race, um, they made a great big placard and they were all, all being filmed. Go Rosie, go Rosie. So That's it, great. It is rather. That is amazing. So, you know, like I have a lot of support. I've got a lot of friends and um, I think that kind of spurs you on as well. To yeah. Sort of not let them down yep. as well. So you, and you have to train, you know, like there's, there's no point going into a race half-baked. No, no. Absolutely. So many people I see at the end of a race, you know, the, the marathon, you know, they walk. Yep. You know, it's like they're going out for a Sunday school for stroll, and I was like, come on, you know, like, Cross why, line do, it, why do an Ironman if you're not going to give it your best? Yep. I think anyway. But yep. each to their own, you know, people have different ideas. Yep. So, and, you know, like I've been racing Ironman now. The first two years, um, I didn't get a podium, but I have ever since. Yep. So, you know, so I was third place and then second and, and now first. I've been Australia's number one five times. Yeah. Like fourth in the world in Ironman, so that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So you've been, you've uh, been to Hawaii to the yeah, three to times. Kona three times. You know, the last race I did in um, Kona, um, my back went about twenty one kilometers in the run. Yep. And I ran bent the whole <laughs> way, and I remember the paramedics were coming. Oh, you can't do this. You, you know, it's try and stand up, if I could stand up, I would. Yep. But, and I was on the ground stretching and doing whatever I could and I couldn't, but I was not gonna not finish. Yep. So I remember going to the finish line and you know, I was running away from <laughs> But I got over the edge. Yep. So. That's, that, and that's what it's about. Yep. Yep. Never give up. Never give up. Yeah. How, were you ever a good swimmer or a- Never. Never a good you know, swimmer. Have you, you know, Shane Gould, she set up a program called Total Immersions and um, she had a, a group of people down in Footscray and it was a $500 uh, course for the weekend. And I learned how to drop my arm and blow bubbles in the water. Um, I, I could do a bit of this and I could sort of swim like that, but I didn't understand the concept of I mean, I was 45 and I never learned to swim properly. Yep. And um, I was so scared I would only sleep, swim on the edge of the pool, you know, 25 metre pool, up to here. Yep. And I'd just stay on the edge in case. You know, and now, like in Hawaii, you swim where? Yeah. Two kilometres out in the ocean and then back again. Two kilometres back, yeah. yeah. And you think, I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I did a race at Elwood Beach and we went the day before and it took me two hours to have enough courage to put my face in the water. Trout was very patient, you know, knocked <laughs> me on the head after a while, but just so that I would keep my face in and be able to swim, you know, you kind of wanted to do that. Yeah. I was so scared I was going to drown, but yeah, it's baby steps, you know, like just one thing and one thing after the other and eventually, you know, it's practice, you just yep. keep going. What's your favourite of the three disciplines? I like riding your bike. Yep. Um, I come from a Dutch background. So, yep. Yeah, bikes are always there. Natural, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and once I mastered the boys bike, you know, like the, and, and getting down on the Yeah, bus, on the aero bars. I used to sort of like ride with one. <laughs> it's because I was so scared to get down. But yep. 
And that's the thing, you know, everything I've ever done, I've been so scared to do, but it's a challenge to make, you know, to make myself do it so that I'm not scared anymore. Yeah. I wouldn't let anyone ride me. Yeah. You know, like if they come near me, traps or happen to cut in front of me, oh, I'd go off. <laughs> you never hit me. And you go, oh God, I didn't. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I was just terrified. So yeah, it's the swimming, the riding and the running. It's just um, something I've pushed myself to do. I, I did um, paragliding. Absolutely terrified of heights. Yep. I thought, I've got to do it. So I, I got a license and I pulled up you... this thing and took off the hill and thought, oh my God. But once I landed, it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. I yeah. An eagle fly around me once. That was pretty nice. Oh, that's awesome. It was right, except I was scared he was going to attack me. <laughs> but he didn't. But yeah, it's just, um, I think, you know, challenging yourself to do something that you think you're scared of and then breaking that barrier and, and, being able to sort of feel proud of yourself, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, um, so many people say, no, I couldn't do that. Don't want to, well, my, probably a lot of them would say, no, I don't want to do that. But a lot of people just don't even think that it's possible for them. Yeah. But it is, you know, like it's like jumping out of a plane, I guess. Um, you just say, yeah, I'm going to go and do it. And once you're up there, someone's going to yeah. push you out. Yeah, there's only way down. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, but I enjoy it. This, the sport. So we're going to race at Port Macquarie. Um, in September. Yes, and then um, Shepparton, half yep. Ironman in November, and then to um, Busselton. We're going to go over there, providing everything so yeah. that we can get around. COVID pending, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and I guess maybe one day I think I'd like to go and race Ultraman Hawaii. Ultraman Hawaii. Yeah. Defend that world record. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's funny, after I did the race, the ultimate I'll be like, no, I'm not ever going to do that again. No. And how many women have said that when they've given birth? I'm not going to do that again. Yep. And we do. And it's been six <laughs> weeks post-race and yeah, you're I'm already thinking about it. Yeah. The pain's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it now. So, yeah, it's the next challenge, maybe. Yeah. That's if the world ever becomes normal again and we can fly somewhere. Yep. Yeah, hope. Fair enough. Yeah. Righto. If you have one piece of advice... For, for anyone that's that's listening at home. Yeah, look, I think about that a lot because that's what everyone sort of said us. And I think if you commit yourself to a race, you know, um, if, you, if you want to just go and do a 5K run, say, um, and sign up for it, pay for it, you know, then you've yep. got to go and do it. And also um, find like-minded people, you know, somebody else that might like to do a run or do a park run and then, you know, buddy up with people there. Um, hang around people who think the same. Yep. You know, it's, it's very hard if you're going to sort of want to do all this stuff. And, and best no one mates, else is around Best you. mates are all drinkers and smokers and, yep. you know, sit on the couch and watch Netflix. Yep. So, you know, like if, if you really want to be fit and, you know, look at me, 62 and I'm nearly 63, couldn't breathe. And I'm the fittest I've ever been in my life. Yeah, it's it's just yeah. a number that I age. Know. I mean, I, I was born smoking. My parents were heavy smokers, always in the house, always in the car. I started smoking when I was 12 because that's what you did when you hung around kids. Yep. And gave up twice when I was pregnant, but it wasn't long before I went back to it. And yeah, 45, I gave it away. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm fit now. Yeah. And I feel good for that. And anyone can feel fit should feel fit really yeah so yeah yeah there you go there we go <laughs> right yo well i think that might be all we've got time for unfortunately no sorry, Rosie. No, no it was fantastic thank you very much for coming back to o health and i hope it works this time i hope it works as well <laughs> <laughs> no we uh I, I think we've ironed out the technical difficulties we've okay. done it we've done a couple of tests so if you're watching this obviously okay. it worked so as long as everyone knows that wasn't my stomach growling. No, yeah, there, the there is there is construction behind us, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, thank you very much for joining oh, us. Thank Rosie. you for letting me um, talk about something I love. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I'm just glad we got you in in between the the age and the radio and oh, the yes. television. I and, know. <laughs> yeah. So we've and the primary school. <laughs> and the primary school. That's right. So never know what's next. Well, I I I, I kind of hope that. Um, people have a better understanding of Iron Man because most people think it's Grant Kenny's huge brain. Yep. People go, where do you surf? Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I'll surf you. 
So yeah, like to to let more people know what triathlon's really about. Yeah. And and the ultimate too. Yeah. Of course. And really help grow that sport. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. I think okay. you're a very very good advocate for it and a thank very you. inspirational story. So thank you very much for sharing it with Just us. Just remember, you're never too old. Yep. And never give up. Never give up. Will mm -hmm. do. Okay. Thank you very much, Rosie. Cheers.